Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about Cotoneaster microphyllis and uh, how to use them for mini bonsai like this. If you're unfamiliar with Cotoneaster, uh, they are a member of the Rose family, and these particular there's a there's a bunch of different varieties, uh, both nursery varieties and wild types. Uh, this is Cotoneaster microphyllus, and these were propagated from an old plant that I have in my collection, uh, and these were cut off branches that I then rooted and they already had quite a bit of character. So I kind of took some of the rooted cuttings and put them directly into these tiny containers. Now this container is just a little bit over an inch wide, maybe two inches tall. You can see that they make nice little flowers there. And then this one also has some berries on it. The flowers tend to usually be in late spring and then the berries form over the summer and stick around through fall and winter. So they have a lot of nice features that make them really great for, you know, seasonal bonsai. Um, but I think that the, you know, the growing habit is something that's really, really fun to work with. So this was uh, pretty much just a whip when I stuck it into this Jim Barrett pot and I wired the trunk to give it this movement. And then I just sort of set it aside and let it grow for a little while. And when it started blooming, I took some photos and posted it to Instagram. It ended up being one of the most uh, engaged images that I've ever posted, despite the fact that I will regularly post large trees that I've spent days working on <laughs> to Instagram. So I think the, the flowers are really sort of a, a draw for this. So if you wanted to replicate this, uh, you can go out and if you want to make a uh, mini bonsai out of Cotoneaster, you can just sort of run out to a garden center and find something. But most likely what you're going to find is something that's in a one gallon can and getting from a one gallon can uh, or even a four inch container uh, down to this can be a little bit tricky. So I would actually suggest that if you're going to do it, you you start from the opposite side, which is obtain the material and then maybe start making cuttings from it. And as soon as the cuttings have rooted, uh, transplant them into small containers like this. So I have a, a few other containers. This is an old uh, ceramic container that I bought for, with, a, with a collection of others. So this is the kind of thing that, that I would be putting them in. We have uh, on bonsify.com some, some nice little pots from Rough Cut Pottery, Bob Potts, and then if you want something a little bit more refined, um, you should check out the uh, the Mame containers that uh, that this guy is making. It's Pytune is his name and uh, p i t e k a dot um, com. I did an unboxing video for his stuff, but these are kind of like the perfect um, type of container that I would be using to put. Uh, put Cotoneaster into and they're not going to look finished when you put them in for the most part because you just don't have enough space. You really have to get the young plant into the container first and then kind of grow it out and I'll share some some of my growing tips and techniques in a future video that actually apply to all mini bonsai, mame bonsai uh, as they're called in Japan. But I uh, just wanted to share these, uh, these Cotone asters really quickly. We actually just listed uh, these three inch pre-wired Cotone aster starters uh, that are all cuttings from the same parent plant on bonesify.com. You can check those out and pick one up if you want there. Uh, otherwise, uh, look forward to uh, seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks everyone.